are the messenger. Death's emissary. Doomsday is upon us. The great drunken prostitute is going to crumble. I know. I know everything. Listen to me. I want to help. I want to help all of you, but nobody will listen to me. Go. Go to the Temple of Isis, but do not enter. She will come there. She knows. I know. No, no, no time. Greetings to you, stranger. You wouldn't happen to have seen a man running as if the plague was snapping at his heels? Do you know what direction he went in? Uh, no, I don't. The fated lover has found his love. I am Locusta, part go-between, part witch. Most of all, I know all about the lovers in this town and provide a number of services. Love letters, secret rendezvous, love potions at all very tender prices. You know, Sophia? And you know that... I know that Sophia has been waiting for you since time began. As my master, Pythagoras, taught me, souls come and go, moving from one body to the next. And your soul loved Sophia in a past life. And you will meet again in other lives yet to come. What do you think about yesterday's tremor? It was nothing as yet. Just a sign. How can you help me? I know the numbers and the words that enchant those which bewitch and those which exercise. I know which plants to use. I am Locusta, the magician, the formidable Thessalian. But I also have a mother's heart. I can make two potions for you, but... The poor fool you came across just now is, alas, my own son, Fructus. He isn't all there, but I love him. Why is the Aedile after your poor son? He seemed harmless enough to me. He means no harm, but he has visions. He sees the end of the world, the universe burning, and all sorts of horrors. He wanders the town, and as nobody listens to him, he speaks to the trees and to the dogs. And to hurry things along, he lights little straw bonfires here and there, but nothing truly serious. One will help you convince your promised one of the danger that threatens us. The other one will help rid you of he who shall come between you, but be warned, it will work in that situation alone. What do I have to do? Bring me all this at midday. I shall wait for you in front of Dionysus Capone. This is going to sound perhaps ridiculous, but I have reason to believe that Vesuvius is going to destroy the city. You have every reason to believe that. That is why you are here, isn't it? For Sophia. The dogs howl at night, and people have seen immense ghosts in the sacred woods.
Greetings, priest of Isis. My name is Adrian, guest of Papidius and friend of Secundus. All friends of Papidius are welcome in this temple. Lavinia is one of your followers. Do you know Sophia also? Yes, I often see her accompanying Lavinia. I have come to see you because I have reason to believe that a great cataclysm is about to occur. Alas, I would like to contradict you. But yes, the signs are indeed dire. I come to bring you this as a sign of Alexandria's devotion to the people of Pompeii. An Egyptian merchant asked me to give it to you. <gasps> Sacred water from the Nile. May Isis look upon you, Adrian, and keep you from harm. If you have nothing more to say to me, I shall go and place this offering in the temple. Greetings, guest of Papidius. You have been to see Locusta, have you not? An affair of the heart? Well, well, if you are a friend of hers, you are welcome here. Flowers and love are a good combination. of that ass that is poisoning my life. So much injustice from such a charming mouth. This mule is an exceptional creature with a very independent mind. What have you got against it? It's independent mind, of course. Since work began again on the baths, that ass has been spending its days lounging in front of my stall, grazing on my flowers and scaring off my customers with its stink. I can't get it to move even an ear for me. Not a very good advertisement for a perfume seller. As you two are so close, ask him to go away. Why don't you turn an inconvenience into an advantage and make the mule your sign? As it seems to like your shop so much, why don't you make use of it? Wait a minute, not so fast. The mule doesn't belong to me. I cannot make use of it like that. Greetings to you, friend. I see that your mule has a good deal of style. Oh, it's you. Yeah, he's quite funny, isn't he? He's feeding himself and not doing any harm to anyone. I know its master well. He's a little quick-tempered and sometimes even more stubborn than his mule, but we should be able to convince him. We could attach your flower baskets to your new sign. That way he won't be able to eat them either. Hmm, I wonder if Caesar was right to conquer you Gauls. You must have an idea, but I cannot tell what it is. The mule grazes, 
its master slaves away, and his wife suffers more than either. And the wife is probably not given perfume very often. You could give some to the worker in exchange for the services of his faithful load bearer. Wonderful! To avoid any criticism, we could make a board with the store's name on it. The pigment seller would be able to paint it for us, and your new partner will be proud to carry it. You are never short of ideas, but there is one thing. Why would the merchant accept this? There's a Gallic saying, let's kill two birds with one stone. He can write his name on the board too. Would you be willing to lend your mule to Ascula while you work? In any case, it won't leave her boutique. And what? Ascula is indeed charming, but what does she want from me? Ascula has a wonderful idea for promotion using your mule. He can be the sign for her boutique. So what? That's the stupidest idea I ever heard. She would like your mule to carry her flower baskets, rather than eating their contents. No way! My mule is happy as he is. He's eating and resting. Ascula is prepared to give you some perfume if you let her use your mule. Hmm. My wife and I have never had perfume before. Well, not since our wedding, at least. All right, it's a deal. Greetings, dear merchant of Pompeii. Ascula and I are thinking of a way to improve the image of your boutiques, which is being unjustly sullied by the unfortunate presence of that mule. Well, I wouldn't have put it like that, but it is true. What can we do? The mule is peaceful, but he is grazing on innocent flowers, and Ascula is very unhappy about that. But if we use flowers to adorn the mule, the beast will attract the right sort of attention. That is our idea. Uh, uh -huh. Ascula, whose heart of gold is well known, is going to give some perfume to the worker in exchange for the services of his mule. Oh, I'm very happy for her. But what does that have to do with me? The subtlety is in transforming a nuisance into an advantage and making the mule a shop sign. Would you be prepared to design a board boasting of your two shops? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. By Mercury, what a wonderful idea. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> adorned for the final sacrifice. Great happenings are upon us, and you alone have understood. I congratulate you, Mule, <laughs> with all my heart. Stay as you are. The disaster is approaching, approaching. Yes, it's coming! <laughs> I am very impressed, stranger. I must say that I've never seen anything like it. What can I do to thank you? You may be able to help me. I need some advice. What would you give to a woman of virtue who does not need or want rouge? I see you are as gallant as you are ingenious. If I were you, I would give her perfumed oil for her hair. There is nothing like the advice of a woman. Which perfume do you recommend? Mm, let's see. I have some cassia, mary, incense, valerian, and cinnamon. You choose. These bottles are beautiful. Are they from Tyre? <laughs> yes, they are pretty, aren't they? If you like them so much, take one. Very well. Yeah. 
you again? I really have to speak to a Doomvir on a most urgent and serious matter. The Dumviri are busy, you relentless young man. They have gone to the great reservoirs in the east. If you wish to see them, you can always swim there, up the pipes. It's just straight ahead, or almost, valley. Listen, a great danger is threatening this city, and disaster is imminent. I must see a Doomvir. Well, I say, that really is terrible. You know what I'd do if I were you? I'd speak to Fructus. He's our specialist in calamities of all sorts. Valley. Later, stranger, something is wrong. Since this morning, the god has refused all the victims which have been offered to him. It's not a good sign, oh no. Greetings to you, O noble priest of Apollo. I am a foreigner, and Popidius is my host. My name is Adrian. I have heard that the god refused all offerings made to him. Is that true? Yes, it is frightening. All the victims live as are showing terrible signs. We killed two young, perfectly white bulls, but in vain. Everything has been refused. We must consult the Haruspexes. I would like a drop of blood of one of the victims. Now that is a strange request. This morning everything is strange. Alas, that is impossible as we have already purified the altar. I'm looking for a tear of Apollo. Hmm. Apollo is the god of poets. Perhaps he will protect you. But cry for you? The gods do not cry. Adrian the Fair, 
What good wind brings you here? <laughs> Your friend the painter's not here. I think you scared him off. I'm looking for some pure wine. Or oh, just what you need. It's the wine I sell to the priests for their sacrifices, and I serve it to my lares. Perfect religious wine. Nothing more than pure fermented grape juice with no preservatives or the slightest additive. For, uh, two sisters. I also need a little incense. I'm not running a religious stall. Take some from the box. It's the incense I use each morning for my Larry's. In your great generosity, perhaps you could also find me some light oil. Oh, is that how you talk in gall? Lamp oil, stinking and rancid, and used to light our way. Oil for the pleasures of Venus. <laughs> Here, friend, take it. And make a coin shine in my hand by way of thanks. Greetings! You are Venus's favorite, stranger. Is your master here, or your mistress? Neither. 
my master has gone to make a sacrifice at Vespasian's temple and has taken my mistress with him. If you wish to see Lavinia, I advise you to come back before Senna. Octavius receives in the morning only. Greetings. This garden is quite spectacular. May I come in? I would be offending you greatly if I let you enter this way. Make an entrance in keeping with your rank, stranger. And see Stagius at the main gate. Tell me, is there a freed slave by the name of Sophia living in this house? Yes, that's right. Didn't this morning's tremor worry you? Oh, it's nothing to worry about, except it shook the vines, which has given me a bit of extra work. You should be more careful, Gardner, because I saw Fructus squeezing behind a tree, and if something happens, you're the one who'll be punished. By Pollux, thank you. I, I would only be a few moments. Can, can you watch the entrance to the house for me? With pleasure. Here is our gallant lover, Adrian. Have you found everything I asked for? I knew you would manage. The potions will be ready tomorrow. I'll come and find you. Until then, speak of this to no one. say to a small cup of honey wine. It's the house's own special recipe. Greetings. You must be Adrian. I have heard of your arrival here. My name is Marcus Epidius. Our great friend Secundus must have spoken about me. We are the same age. Will you join me for a game of Tarlin?
most didn't count. Now, let's move on to more serious things and play for real, for money. It's my good luck amulet. I always pass it over my coins before playing to attract good luck. Don't you have a charm to help you? Bad for a beginner. The wheel of fortune has turned for you. You must have a secret technique of Gallic ruse. Ah, <laughs> all right. Don't want to say. I'm a good loser. Take this tally as a token of my defeat. That's enough. Let's go to the baths. Hmm. You again. Lavinia will see you in the garden. I believe you know the way. Sophia, I've been waiting for the chance to speak to you. <laughs> well, if it isn't my lamentable suitor, have you found a new way to cook your turnips of love? Excuse my forwardness, but I have brought you a present, this little basket of dates from Alexandria. I knew you would appreciate these more than anyone else. Oh, dates from Alexandria. How did you guess? Love gives us second sight. I cannot accept a gift of love from a stranger. Sophia, I am not a stranger to you. We have loved each other forever, since the beginning of time. Since chaos bore the earth and the sky, who loved each other as we now love each other. You speak like a seducer who accosts young girls on the terraces of a circus. No, these are not gallant words to seduce you. I... Remember, 
We knew each other in another life, when our souls inhabited other bodies. Do you not recognize me? One day, Locusta did speak of these stories of reincarnation. I had gone to see her secretly after a dream, but... Sophia, time is short. I can't tell you everything, but we must leave this town. Leave? But what are you talking about? A long time ago, a man who looked like you appeared to me. This man from my dream looked like you. Oh, I was still very emotional the next morning. I asked Locusta what she thought about my dream. She is part witch, part clairvoyant, and she reads the cards. She answered my questions with a vague mention of Pythagoras and, and another life. But what if it was just another of her go-betweens tricks? I think you are both in this together. Listen, I have come here for one reason alone. Do not try to understand how I know, but in three days Vesuvius is going to erupt. The town will be completely destroyed, buried in ashes. If you stay, you will die. I beg you, we have to leave now. You can think about it later. But Adrian, I cannot leave like that. I have a family. Lavinia is a mother to me, and I cannot leave her without saying a word. You storm into my life and... Oh, I don't know. I Give me until tomorrow. Ah, our young poet. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sophia, go and prepare my costume for this evening. Adrian, I hear you have come to bring me something. Was that just an excuse for returning here? My bracelet. I have been looking everywhere for it, and I even accused my slaves of stealing it. Octavius wanted to whip them until they confessed. Thank you for helping us to avoid a judicial and domestic mistake. But I would like to warn you, I saw you yesterday during the banquet, looking at Sophia with eyes of love. Yes, yes. Make no mistake. Sophia is not for you. She is going to marry in a few months. You may have been mistaken, young man, but I must tell you that Sophia is not just a freed slave who can choose her lovers and change them every spring. She is Octavius's daughter and a slave of this house, and as I never had any children, we have brought her up as if she were ours, as a free and chaste young woman. So don't play the lady killer. You are a young, free man from a good family, and she could easily give in to your ways. When she turned ten, we freed her, and Octavius promised her to Abinus, his intendant, and one of his favorite slaves. Octavius freed him so he would inherit his fortune, and I shall leave mine to Sophia. That way, she shall be independent from her husband. Do not ruin such a bright future. He is a gifted young businessman. They will marry in the Calends of November, when Abinus returns from Ephesus, where he went to collect a debt for Octavius. Octavius is dedicated to this marriage. I am less convinced because... Sophia is disgusted by Habinus, but she has no choice. This marriage is the chance of her life. Do not worry her now. I'm not asking you never to see her again. Just don't meet with her alone. That aside, my house is always open to you.